Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, before I get started on this video, just wanted to address the uh, elephant in the room, or maybe it's just the elephant in the room for me and for nobody else, but um, I'm, I know I haven't been uploading videos as often as I was before, and so I'm sorry for that. Um, I was just not at home for a while, I was living elsewhere, and it was um, just kind of hard to make videos while doing some other things that were going on. Um, but I'm back now, and I hope to be uploading videos at a more regular schedule over the next foreseeable future, at least. I don't know, this year has been so weird that you never really know what's going to happen next, and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same way. So I don't want to make any promises, but that's kind of where we're at right now. So anyway, today's video is actually going to be about a book that I read a couple of months ago now. It's been a while, but these are thoughts that I really wanted to encapsulate into a video. So I thought I'd just do a quick book review, and that is for Arusha and the End of Time by Roshni Chokshi. Now, this book is actually part of the Rick Riordan Presents series. So for those of you that haven't heard of Rick Riordan before, he's the author of the Percy Jackson series. It was a very big phenomenon when it comes to American children's literature. Um, and the first book I think came out when I was in maybe fourth or fifth grade, maybe? I don't, that was at least, I read it in fifth grade, so I'm assuming it came out around then. Um, and I remember how much of a phenomenon it was. I mean, maybe not as much as Harry Potter was in its time, but Percy Jackson was a pretty big deal for a lot of kids that grew up the same time that I did. And it was just such a great concept with combining uh, Greek mythology and the gods and goddesses and other uh, characters in Greek mythology and bringing them into the modern world and seeing how a kid who was my age would thrust into that world would react to it and the adventures and quests that he would go on. Um, so I really loved that series and when I heard that Rick Riordan was doing um, these types of series with other mythologies and cultures, I was really intrigued. And I was really intrigued by the way that um, he was doing it. So the Rick Riordan Presents series are actually written by other authors. Um, this one is by Roshni Chokshi, obviously. Um, and so what I thought was really cool about that was a, like, you kind of see a lot of times um, white men in particular just kind of writing about cultures that aren't their own without really doing the research to understand them. Um, and w what that does is, is, first of all, it takes a culture that you don't really understand and then you misrepresent it and it hurts people's feelings and people get offended. But then the second piece of that is it fails to amplify voices of people from that culture and fails to give them a platform that you've now kind of taken for yourself. So it's really nice to see that Rick Riordan, instead of just being like, oh, well, I could just do research on these other cultures, found authors that could reflect the type of voice that he had in the Percy Jackson series, but actually come from these cultures and are intimately um, intimately understand them and was basically able to give them a platform using his platform. So I think that that's awesome and I'm, I'm really glad that he was able to do something like that and he thought of doing something like that. And anyway, the product of that whole thing was Arusha on the End of Time and the whole Arusha series. I have actually only read the first book, so I'm only going to be talking about this one. Um, so basically, it's a very similar concept to Percy Jackson in that Arusha basically is this girl um, who's in, I think she's, I don't know, it's been a couple months since I read it, so the details are escaping me a little bit, but um, I think she's like 12, um, and she lives with her mother at a museum, and her mother kind of collects these Indian artifacts and ancient Hindu artifacts, and she basically gets on some shenanigans at the museum that releases this whole chain of events that kind of thrusts her into this destiny to do a quest to defeat um, a shadowy figure um, who kind of stems from Hindu mythology and she meets all these gods and goddesses and other characters in Hindu mythology um, along the way and kind of goes on a similar quest to Percy Jackson with her with her sister actually instead of her friends um, which is which is pretty cool so I think like the main thing that really drew me to this and I actually include this book in one of my book hauls previously. Um, the main thing that drew me to the concept was just kind of reflecting on my own childhood and having read books like Percy Jackson, having read books like Harry Potter, I personally, you know, was able to see those characters and really relate to them in many ways. I mean, a character like Hermione Granger, for example, from Harry Potter was really inspiring to me and I was able to see a lot of myself in her and she gave me a lot of confidence in believing that I could use my talents to achieve 
um, you know, whatever I wanted to do. But I never quite had that feeling when reading books as a kid that, you know, that could be me. Like that, you know, that feeling where you just kind of read about a character and you're like, huh, I mean, given all these like physical characteristics and the descriptions of their personality, like this could literally be me and I could see myself in this character. I never quite had that feeling and I think that that is a feeling that many kids um, who you know tend to be white kids in general are able to have that feeling when reading just anything in most of children's literature and that was a feeling that I never had and it wasn't necessarily something that like drastically affected my childhood or made me feel especially underconfident or anything. I still feel like I had the right kind of support in my community uh, to make me feel like I could do anything and that my teachers growing up, my parents, my family, uh, friends around me, like I always felt supported in a way that made me feel like, oh, I can do anything. But when I read these adventure novels as a kid, I never quite saw myself in the characters. And so when I realized that this book existed, I thought it was really cool because I could see myself in Arusha and I could look at this character and be like, oh, that could be me. And obviously I'm 23 now, so it's a little different reading it as an adult and not as a 10 year old, 12 year old kid, but it kind of brought back these nostalgic thoughts for me as to what could have been if this book had existed 10 or 15 years ago when I was at that impressionable age. And I think one, it would have been incredible to see myself represented in adventure novels and children's literature, which I loved to read at the time, um, and, and kind of have that feeling of, yeah, that could be me going on this quest and adventure. And, and two, I think it probably would have been a very empowering experience for me as a kid, um, just to kind of see these two cultures that kind of make up different parts of my identity, like this ancient Hindu culture. I've grown up with all of these traditions that my parents and grandparents and other family members have taught me. Um, and, and it was always such a struggle to take those ancient family type things and, um, you know, a, a sort of reconcile them with the modern world and my school and my friends and what people around me were doing in the U.S. where I grew up. Um, and that was always something that I found kind of difficult to do, to come to terms with, okay, like I have this part of my identity that kind of just stays at home and none of my school friends like know about it. And then I have this identity that I put on when I go to school and it's not really something that my parents ever see or my grandparents ever engage with. And, you know, having that sort of multifaceted identity that I can identify with or many other uh, children of immigrants can identify with represented in a book was really cool because Aru kind of deals with those same things where at first she tries to kind of reject her Hindu culture and her upbringing um, and just sort of assimilate with with the world that she is a part of now and that's an experience that I can relate to quite easily and sort of going on this journey for me which was did not involve slaying monsters and stuff like that but going on this sort of almost spiritual journey where you sort of come to terms with this idea that no it's it's actually kind of cool that I have this really interesting background that my family wants um, to share all these stories and traditions and things with me and and that I can take those on and pass them on to the next generation and now I'm really thankful that my parents and grandparents were, um, you know, pretty insistent on me learning a lot about Hindu mythology, Hindu tradition, um, Hindu, the Hindu religion, essentially, and that I have a lot of that knowledge now that many of my peers might have rejected when they were younger and didn't quite have the opportunity to learn. And I find that now many of my Indian American or Hindu American peers are interested in learning about these facets of their backgrounds and their identities and it's cool to be able to say like yeah I mean I know some of these things because my grandparents like really insisted on me learning them so it's now cool to have those discussions and help other people on their journeys as well. Um, so I think like that took a long time to sort of come to terms with you know like having these two disparate parts of your identity um, and just seeing that struggle or struggle or mental journey or whatever you want to call it represented in a children's novel I think would have had a huge impact on me as a kid. Um, so that's why I was really drawn to this book and I really wanted to read it because I feel that kids who look like me um, who are growing up now could read this book and feel empowered in a way that I 
never quite had the opportunity to feel. So I think that that's really cool. About the book and the plot itself, I mean, it's a well-written book for what it is. It is a kid's novel, so it's not... The plot is rather simplistic. It's not the most complex thing. The only character that's, like, truly complex is Arusha herself. Um, you know, other characters are just kind of there as plot devices. Um, so reading it as someone who now reads, like, pretty serious adult literature, reads a lot of nonfiction, um, reads a lot of books that have been nominated for, like, Booker Prizes and stuff like that, you know, you, I kind of read it and I was like, huh, well, that's it. But, you know, I had to really put myself in the shoes of someone who was, like, 10 years old reading it and as a middle grade reader, and I realized that I think it was actually a very fun story. It was a very easy read to get through. Um, I think it was just a, a really great, you know, easy to understand adventure novel, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was the representation of the uh, Hindu traditions and Hinduism in this book, because that was something that I was definitely on the fence about, because when you see like Rick Riordan's books, so then the Percy Jackson books, or the other series he wrote that was about the Egyptian gods and goddesses, I forget the name of it, um, those are both cultures that are of the past, essentially. Nobody really believes in Zeus and Poseidon or um, Ra and all of the Egyptian um, pantheon of gods and goddesses anymore. Like, it's not an active religion. Hinduism is a little different. There's, you know, like a billion people in India follow this religion and um, people actively participate in these traditions. It's a real facet of people's lives. It's a real facet of my life. And to see it kind of taken and put into a fantasy novel, um, I was just a little concerned about like how Roshni Chokshi would represent that, even though she herself grew up in a household similar to mine. Um, and so I was hopeful that because this was her culture as well, she would be really careful about how she represented it. But I also was a little apprehensive going in. I was like, is this going to be a book that makes fun of things that I actually believe in and that my family believes in? Or is it going to do a just representation? I think, um, she did a really good job. First of all, I would say I was personally, I felt that it was a really nice way of marrying um, this active, thriving religion with a fantasy novel and kind of making sure that she wasn't upsetting anyone or portraying anything offensively. Um, I think she did a really good job of showing the kind of respect that um, an endeavor like this uh, kind of demands. So I really enjoyed that piece of it. The other piece of it that I kind of realized as I was reading the book, um, and this should have come to me earlier, but I realized it while I was reading the book, is that Hinduism is, you know, it's, it's different from several other religions in that there's no, you know, one prophet, there's no one Bible, or there's no one sort of source of truth material. Um, that Hinduism draws from. It's A lot of it has been passed down through oral tradition, it's been passed down through families, and for that reason the type of Hinduism you might see from someone who's practicing in Nepal will differ vastly from someone who's practicing in Java or someone who's practicing in Tamil Nadu in India or you know wherever. You kind of see in every different family their representation of Hinduism is different based on how they've grown up, the stories they've been told, their family deities, all sorts of things. And like there's not really just one definitive version of Hinduism. And so I knew that, uh, I kind of, well, I didn't know, I kind of came to understand that no matter how she portrayed um, some of these characters, I would disagree with some of those interpretations because that's not how my family taught me about those things. But that was how her family taught her about those things. So that's fine. And that's, you know, her family's interpretation of certain characters in the Hindu mythology. Um, and I think that coming to terms with that and realizing like, okay, there's not one right or wrong way to portray um, these characters or individuals or what have you, um, coming to terms with that was really important. And I think that I sort of realized that as I went through the book and, and said, you know, it's fine that this doesn't align with exactly my interpretation of Hinduism because there isn't a right one. So that's all that goes to say, that's a bit rambly, but all that goes to say that that concern of mine that um, things would not be represented in a fair or respectful way was definitely assuaged by actually reading the book and realizing that she actually put in a lot of effort to make sure that um, these characters were represented in a way that wouldn't offend anyone who is a practicing Hindu. So I'm glad that that fear of mine uh, turned out to be for nothing. 
Um, so yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a fantastic read, and I think more so than me recommending it to like the general population to read it, if you know any kids who are in elementary or middle school who are Hindu American or even Indian American in general, um, I would recommend giving them a book like this as a gift. I mean, it's the holiday season right now. Um, lots of people are buying gifts for their friends and family. Um, I know this year it really sucks that a lot of people can't get together with their friends and family, so you might just be mailing gifts or something like that. Um, but if there is a child in your life that um, you know fits that uh, description, this might be a really good option for a book to give them. I think I've been really glad to see that children's literature has become a lot more diverse than it was 10 or 15 years ago and that there's so many more protagonists in books that you see now that represent all the different kids that exist in the world more so than just white kids. Um, so I think that that is really encouraging to see. Obviously there's a lot more work to be done when it comes to diversity in literature, but um, that is really encouraging and it's really great to see that kids like me or how I was 10 years ago now have this representation that they can look at and be like, huh, like I can relate to that. That could be me. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would definitely recommend that. And I think it's a fun read for anyone, um, honestly. So if you enjoyed like Percy Jackson, you should definitely read this book. It's a lot of fun and you might learn something if you're not Hindu and you might learn a little bit about uh, the Hindu religion. And honestly, for anyone like me who is you know an adult now um, but grew up Hindu or in an Indian household um, I would recommend just reading it for the nostalgia factor and also kind of that it really gave me a really feel-good feeling of like if this had existed when I was a kid I would have loved it and it would have made me feel really empowered and just realizing that okay like kids like me now have that ability to feel empowered in that way was it felt really good so if you're someone like me, I would also recommend reading this book. Um, and I know that Rick Ryden Presents is a series that um, kind of goes across different cultures, so I'm sure there's options for people of other immigrant cultures as well, so would highly recommend checking those out. So anyway, that is the end of today's review of Arusha and the End of Time by Roshni Chokshi, part of the Rick Ryden Presents series. I hope you guys liked this video. If you liked it, please drop it a like. If you have anything to say about what I had to say, please drop a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. As I said, I'm going to try really, really hard to be more regular about my uploading schedule. So hopefully there'll be more videos coming out over the next few weeks, months, etc., into the future. And I hope this family continues to grow. Thank you so much for watching as usual. Um, I hope to see you guys next time, but for now, bye bye.